This is Stephen and Mark, and this is our first match between Swifty and Kevin. Uh, Swifty is in red, white, black, kind of a controlly shell with some walkers and tokens as his main go-to wins. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Kevin is on his standard um, red, red, black that could be aggro or could be punisher, kind of depending on which mode he takes it, and he will often vary it back and forth a little bit. Definitely, um, and he is, he's running that. What what is that interesting card that he drafted? The the four drop that like makes all of your non combat damage do more. Yeah, the new god Ojej, something like that. Uh, it's it's not going to come up. I don't think a lot of the new cards were not coming up. Huh. Okay. Um, I, like the new set is like Ojeg, I think. Huh. Okay. Ojer, Ojer, I think. That, yeah. Nice. So, who do you like in this matchup? Obviously, uh, like, I, I think just on just based on history, I've got to go with Swifty, right? Just like you know, history. Yeah, uh, he does know how to play, for right? Sure. Uh, I mean, Kevin's fine, uh, but like, but I also just think Swifty's deck just more cohesive. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I've not seen Kevin's main deck list. I do think this is Kevin's best draft that I've seen from Kevin. Um, I think he had some really solid, interesting picks. Some things, even when I, when I first saw it, I was kind of down on, and then I thought a little more about it. I was like, that's not bad. I think the power of his is going to be that mock soul ring combo, right? Like, yeah. how much he draws that. Like, if he hits that mock soul ring, um, like, he can have some pretty ridiculous starts with this thing, and that's going to be hard to uh, come back from. Absolutely. So I know that they were uh, getting ready to start the match, so mm -hmm. I think they were finding some dice or something. Uh, yeah, I'd probably uh, try to figure out who's going first. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, going first, I think, matters a ton in this matchup, though, just knowing Kevin's list. Yeah, yeah. Let's jump over and take a look at, uh, we can see, see Swifty's list, at least. Yeah, I have Swifty's list here. You can cut and paste them there. I just uh, opened it in the wrong window. I... All good. Let's, uh, yeah, let's pull it up. Yeah, my tech. Do, do, do. I could just click on the list instead of cut and pasting it into where we wanted it to be. Shame, shame. I know, I'm miserable. I'm bad at this job. Okay. I just I talk pretty and look pretty. That's what I do. We'll just dock your pay by 20%. Oh, sweet. All right. I'll drink one less Budweiser. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Uh, the, I think the Karn in this list is just like doing a ton of work. Yeah. It, it has a, it gives a finisher to a deck that has a ton of grind value. Yeah. But the, the, I'm not Peter, but you know who I am. Uh, the, the Karn has the ability to just like grab all of these hate from the side. I'm not Swifty, so we're, <laughs> we're equal. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what are the cards that, I mean, obviously I know you're a huge fan of a Johnny Vengeant. Yeah, no, I, I think he took it early. I don't think anyone else was going to grab it. I, I think he could have grabbed something else in there. But, like, uh, you know, particularly, uh, you know, I think he really wanted the Tomb in this list. I think that, that hurts this list a little bit. I think the Tomb would, would have been massive. Uh, and he also lost the City of Traitors uh, as a potential. But, so I, I think the Avengeant goes down a little bit here. But he can still crank it up. He can't get to turn one Avengeant off of, like, you know, the craziness. But... Uh, he can still crank it out pretty fast. And uh, in a match like this, it's going to do a lot of work because it's going to gain you some life, and it's just going to lock down some of those threats. It, you know, It's just going to lock down something repeatedly over and over again. Uh, also really good at locking down somebody if they get color screwed. Um, that makes sense. You know. I, I don't see a ton of life gain out of this list, and I see a lot of cards that hurt him. Uh, this makes me worried when I see him playing right. against a modern red opponent. Yeah, no, that, that, he was worried about this match. Like, he distinctly said in one of the things he was worried about this match, right? Like, it doesn't seem good for him, yeah. The Avenger, the, uh, the Ajani can gain some life, um, but that's it. Yep. Right. And I mean, I think that there's a lot of things that are kind of invalid. Right? Like, if, <laughs> if, by the, if you're top decking against Mono red and you're at four life and you top deck a him to Turok, it's the worst feeling in the world. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, you know, he's got some good stuff out of the board for this match. Like, uh, the, the, you know, do you bring in the bridge? The bridge question is always with the Karn is always an issue. Like some matches I want to bring it in, yeah. but it didn't like, but I always wanted to have it as a Karn target and, you know, it, it becomes, I wish there was like a, a, a functional second bridge that you could yeah, draft you both. five mana. Yeah. Like leave the five mana one in the board and bring yep. in the good one. Like I wish there was a functional second bridge of some type. He's got moat in the board, but that's not the same. You know? Correct. Yeah. I mean, moat's for sure going to come in this match. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I don't know what. Um, everybody lives. This could be great out of the board. Yeah, I'm trying to see other stuff that is like really gonna do a ton of work. There's no weird um, undercity shenanigans along with um, along with the uh, undercity shenanigans gaining life. Is there? Uh, I don't know. There's the second path, and I've almost never taken the second path. I've only taken. I, I won the only game I ever took it. I needed the scry. It was important. Nice. Um, but no, that is a valid question. Um, Let's see. We'll pull it up here and take a look at it. Yeah, we need. Uh... So there's scry, there's create treasures. No, there's no life gain. Yeah, no life gain. No. What a bummer. So, 
All right. So, so it looks like they're still figuring out still what's, going on, what's going on you wanna, here. You wanna, you wanna yeah, I'm going to run and check out what's going on here. Cool. I'll jump back over here and take a look at the deck a little bit more as well. Let's see. Moxfield. All right. So other things that are looking interesting about this list. Uh, Prismatic Any is going to do a ton of work. There's a lot of deck cards in Kevin's deck that just literally cost two mana or less. Uh, or fewer, I suppose. Um, I think the Phyrexian Revoker can do some good work. Opposition Agent, not as relevant here. Um, Deathly Voidwalker being unable to block is going to be super relevant. They're waiting on us. Oh, perfect. Okay, they are good to go then. So let's jump back into this and take a look at what's going on. We can turn off the Ender City since that's probably not relevant yet. All right, so Kevin led off with... Uh, what is that card called? Is that a Monstrous Fish Spear? No, that no, it's, is... It's um, the one-mana Sulfuric Vortex. Yeah. Um... Ruh. It's on his list. Something is, vortex. Is it molten something? Molten influence. No. Sounds possible. No. No. You can just uh, go to the draft list. I can put, pop it out real quick. Is impact tremors? No, not impact tremors. It is. There's this this a really vortex. vortex. Here it is. This whole list is just full of tons of cards that I've never seen before. Right, 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 right. Um, and, and honestly, like, they work well together. Right, at the beginning of each player's upkeep deals one damage to them, and then whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast that spell, Roy Boy takes. So on turn one, that's pretty hot, right? Because he's got a, a mox. So it's like, hey, if you're going to mox, you're going to take five damage for that mox. Totally. So, I don't love this card, but anywhere you want it, a turn one seems really strong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's probably going to deal, what, five damage over the course of the game? Oh, yeah. Better yeah, than yeah, most yeah, likely. I mean, it already dealt one, right? I mean, yeah. already 19. Mm-hmm. And also, that, like Swifty's not pressuring life total in any kind no, of real no, way, no. so it's not any, like, it's not the, the reciprocal part of it's not really going to matter. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to actually be pretty good right here. Like a turn one molten vortex, see a rolling vortex seems really sick. I could see Kevin like hurting himself enough that at some point Swifty just fourth airling us is over the top though. That's so. that, that's that's going to be the card that could, probably can be the backbreaker in this match, right? Yeah. Like, like any form of fourth for you know even three or four is just going to. And Swifty, I mean, having very reliable mana, the the fetch land run in this draft was like much tighter than usual, which is kind of yeah, cool to see. It went quick. Yeah. All of them, but uh, two went in the same in a two round period. Yeah. And then the two other went fell swallowed up. So Bayou was undrafted because no one was in the you know, green black. Um, if other... you're Swifty and you're holding a bitter blossom in hand, do you play it? <laughs> no, I don't think you do, man. Like blossom, no. What you do is you're just going to. Oh. Pitch a white card and get rid of that vortex. So okay, he's getting rid of the vortex instead of killing the mox. Yeah, uh, it's it's too much, right? It's too much damage, and especially like boom, right there. He he had yeah. a mox in hand. Yep. So you know like, he had to do it versus the mox in, hand, and then he gets the inquisition off of it. So I don't love the sequencing here of uh, inquisitioning after getting rid of the. Vortex. He needed no, he had to right because he needed to pick up the white for the for the march. Oh, I see. Pitch I see. the card to get rid of the vortex so he can play the jet. Otherwise, it takes five. Otherwise, yeah. it takes five. Okay, right? I, so, I love it then. Yeah, no, it was, it was good sequencing, right? Yeah. Like, no brainer to hit this one instead. Right. Now he did have to pitch the fourth though. Okay. That was the the, the downside of that is to, but if not, like we said, that was he took the Layla off of the Inquisition. By the way, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, as I said, like, that Vortex was going to add up to a lot of damage. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Yeah, March of Otherworldly Light is one that I feel like is in that spot of tons of other cards where they're all replaceable with each other. But it's right. probably best in class. Yeah, it's so good. I, I, I think, like, I like it over Path just because it's more versatile. Yeah, it, it's not always one mana, which is nice. But a lot of the times, you know, it's pretty low cost just because of, you know, the low cost of the format, like... Uh, yeah. This is the new Raptor. So this one is a four three, and then if the opponent plays something not on on not on their turn, um, I think it's right. It might be something else. It's got you have to look at the list again. It starts with but an S. I remember. It's four damage. It's, it's, he took it pretty high. Uh, Sky Claw Raptor. There we go. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah. So if it's not their turn, it's probably not going to come up as a new stuff. No. Uh, even that, this would have did all day. Yeah, something going on yeah. wrong. Uh, if it's not their turn, they take like four or five damage. Right. So it's it's a, it's a Punisher card. Pretty so good. they counter your spell on your turn, they take four or five damage. And it's a four, three for three. Yeah, that's like, huge. That's the, that's the ridiculous thing. Um, don't know what happened to that Voidwalker there. Um, oh, it, it got, uh, he cast Voidwalker and it got bone crushed. It got stomped. Reasonable. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, having to pitch the fourth obviously hurts. I, I mean, um, it does. That's one of the that's one of the things that breaks symmetry here. Right. Oh, and that's a bob. <laughs> How bold. Yeah, you know, well, uh, Johnny Vinger would be really good right now because you know you can just bolt bolt down that Raptor in game three. Yeah, so it looks like we're looking at what fourteen to nineteen. Yeah, I'm gonna have them pull those up here in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, Karn's not that great in this match, just because like you know Kevin's probably gonna have a threat, right? And that's the that's the thing. Like Karn's great in matches where they're not gonna have a lot of threat. Ooh man, Scythe Clovers into Rabble Master. That's brutal. Yeah, I mean, there's also the trouble of like the, the trouble with Karn in this matchup is that the chance of you actually making it to six mana to be able to cast the Mycos and Lattice is like pretty low anyway. You can already see his life total sitting like down to nine. And he doesn't even know his fifth mana out yet at this point. So without some serious acceleration like Soul Lands or anything like that, the odds of actually making it up to uh actually making it up to six mana right. and being able to resolve it is just almost zero. Right. It, it's just it's not something you want in the aggressive world, right? Like yeah. again some of the other matches Karn's gonna be back breaking, but like here it's just and there's Lauren to kill the Mox, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. And then there's going to be a block, right? It's going to kill something. It'll kill a Goblin token. Yeah. Or it'll kill Rabble Master if, if he attacks with the Rabble Master. Yeah, but he, I mean, why would you? I mean, Pipe Six happen. <laughs> That's fair. And the Scythe Claw is at a 4 3, so it's. 4 it, it 3. You cannot trade with the. With I the mean, Scythe you can gang block with the two. and Yeah, you can double block up. Yep. They're both two ones. But no, I mean, Swifty, Swifty pre board, I think, has a very tough time in this matchup. That's Impact Tremors, I'm yeah. pretty sure. And he scoops up the Tremors. Yeah. Because he's going to get a go another Goblin that's one. Every Goblin that comes in off Rabble Master is just going to ping him away. Absolutely. All right, so Kevin, you know, uh, looking dominant in that one. Uh, it's... I mean, he had to do... The, the Vortex was powerful, and he had to use a lot of resources to get out from under that, right? Uh, obviously, and... But... Yeah. Um, if that's what you're gonna do, right? Then it, it's a tough, it's a tough matchup. Uh, I feel like this is where Mono Red shines, right? As in the pre-board matchups, especially when people don't respect it. Like we don't, we didn't see any chills taken. Not that chills is the best card against it, but like Thrag Tusk didn't go taken. There's not, there's a lot of cards that traditionally you see drafted when Mono Red is in the field that just didn't go. Um, I know we saw Hydro and Blue Elemental Blast both go, right. which is pretty cool to see. Yeah, both went. And that's pretty standard at this point, right? Because Red's really Oh, really? Good. Yeah. They've both been going a lot lately. Okay. At least yeah. on Discords. I know both Rebs do. I, I, I've not seen the Bebs go. Yeah. On Discords lately, they have been. But that's Red's like, just been really good lately. I mean, sure, just... that makes sense. Yeah, kind of with the rise of, uh, of Ragavan, it feels like everything is kind yeah. of shifted. I mean, even since the Ragavan, you know, outside of Ragavan, right? Just like uh, Caves of Chaos, the power of Red White. I mean, Red White just fourth air lingas, Comet. Red White just keeps getting dumb Commander cards, like gar cards that aren't legal in any format other than Legacy, like Commander, Comet, stuff like that. Like, like it's, uh, a card that didn't get drafted today that Andrew should have drafted, Orthari. Orthari, yeah, that card's good. Right. Like they keep putting these Red White Commander cards that are just bonkers, right? It's true. I mean that that one at least has a fair mana cost, right? You have to pay five mana to do it. Yeah, cards right. like Maddening Hex are just like so irritating to me. Right. But granted, I'm the person who loses to Maddening Hex. Yeah, no, hundred <laughs> percent. All right, so let's let's jump back and take a look at the deck Boards, list. Right. Uh, we don't have Kevin's yet, but we right. will after this matchup. All right. Honestly, I think I take Karn out in this matchup um, and just really? bring in Bridge. Okay. Okay. I was gonna say because you need access to the bridge somehow. Yeah, yeah, you think you just swap it up, right? I mean, Karn. Okay. I, okay. I mean, Karn's gonna fog them. Like you can do Karn, get the bridge immediately, which is fine. But like. Generally, the problem with Karn, you're not going to get the lock win with this, right? Because they're going to have a threat on board, yep. and you're not. He doesn't lock down the creatures. So unless you have the only way you're going to get the lock win is if you have a couple blockers out already. Yep. Um, that can deal with it because you're otherwise you're probably just not getting the lock win in this matchup. Authority of the consoles is incredible. Yeah, that's I think his all star card here. Yeah. Uh, Authority. Bridge is good. Bridge is good. Ever lives is okay. It'll counter a spell. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that really is, is worthwhile. The Lulu's cost you life, which is scary. Uh, Moat's probably worthwhile. I think there's so many cards he wants to take out that there's a good chance that you still, like, play Everybody Lives and maybe even Fracture. Right. Just because, like, you want to get rid of, uh, you want to be able to get rid of those big slamming enchantments. Yeah. Being able to play also helps. Right? Yeah, so. totally. I don't know. 
Okay, it looks like they're just still shuffling up and resolving hands. Okay. Yeah. All right. So oh, Sophie Smith sends, sends it, back. it back. Kevin looks like he's keeping. I thought he was swinging back for a second. He reached for the deck like he was, but then he just did the adjustment and said, um, "I think we're good." Yep. Say, I mean, if, if I'm Swifty, I'm taking out what Thought sees Bitter Blossom, uh, Karn. There's at least at least three cards coming out. Yeah, I mean, you take out too many though. You take you take out win cons, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Like... But I, I don't I don't know what else. I mean, I think he's in a tough spot. Authority of the Councils is the best card in his deck, but right. Kyle also. I mean, sorry, Kevin also has two cards that shut down life gain. Right. Or three cards. He has the Registor as well. So there's like a lot of ways in which life gain doesn't actually help that much. But it also just slows them down, right? Makes them come and play tap. Like the Goblin tokens can't attack. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's still still good. I'm right. just saying that like it's not it's not the game ender like you'd hope for it to be. Right, no, for sure. I see at least two lands from Kevin. I see an authority of the console in his hands. Yeah, that's a good one. If you have to pick six, you want that as one of them. Yeah. Sending back the march, it looked like? Yeah, I couldn't tell. I think it's the March of Other Worldly Light that needs to ship back. Does he have a pyroclasm in hand? No, that can't be. I don't think he has it in his deck, but um Maybe it's a meltdown. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know why he'd bring a meltdown, but there's the march. I saw something red. Young Pyro? That could make sense. I thought it was Old Border, but we'll see. Yeah, there's the... There's the authority. Yep. And is that a tapped Blood Crypt? That's yeah. kind of shocking, if so. Yeah, that's a bit painful. All right. So we're going to fetch here. We got a little flat action. Mm, pardon me. This is game one of Discord 13, or no, St. Lotus 13. Um, yeah, it was Young Pyro. So. Yeah, and he does still have Karn in the main. Okay, he left it in. I, and I understand. Like, I think it's, I don't think it's the main, but like, there is a certain point, like, you you know, you gotta have some wins, and if right. you do get ahead, you gotta get him against a little slower, you can't just lock him down, right? Absolutely. And Authority only gains life on their creatures, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Under opponent's control. Okay. There's the card in his hand, or did you see what he's looking for? I saw it in the shuffling okay. library. So, yeah, let's see. Kevin has a bit of a slow start. Yeah. Bow the Bow Masters. Right Ouch. And that's end of turn, so he's flashing them. Oh, they come in tapped. Okay, right. that's what's happening. Two life, back 21. But still, killing that young Pyro is a good trade. Yeah, no. He's not going to take a lot of damage off of I thought Kevin should grab the wheel. Um,. You know, he yeah. had Sheldred and he had Bowmaster. I thought the wheel. Was... How was hanging out with us as well, and that was she was calling it the whole time. Yeah. She's just like he already has a lot of things set up for it, right? Like with Sheldred in your deck, you might as well. Mm -hmm. Sheldred well, and Bowmaster, right? Well, and also if you're just running stuff out, right? Like you're just gonna be running out of little dudes, you're gonna want to refill that. Right? I think Kevin was really locked in on the idea of I have a lot of cards that will draw cards, like do the red draw. Yeah, and that, uh, yeah, and I think that, that turned him off of the things like uh, the wheel. I think a lot of times that happens where you're in VRD and even if you see a powerful card, you say, that's not my plan. Right. Rather than like, it might actually be correct that to stay off your plan, but I think it's hard to reconsider in that moment that maybe I should lean away from the, my plan and take this powerful card. Right. The deck that no, especially better. in a face-to-face, -face, right, where you're, you know... Yeah, yeah, there's zero time. Oh, oh there's the Maddening oh, Hex. there's the Hex, yeah. That's, that's, that's a lot. And Swifty, <laughs> so unlike himself, does not have any blue cards today. Yeah. So, yeah, let's see. A Fracture would take it out. Uh, a March that he put back in the deck. Yep. Uh, uh, <laughs> Lauren. Yep. And a lot... Of, I mean, also you can just play creatures. Right. And and Dovin can stop it from doing damage. Oh, Dovin can uh, can freeze those too. Okay. Yeah. Put in all damage. Pretty cool. So we've got fetch for a triome here at the end of turn. Yeah, but we'll see if, if he has any of those cards. Back down to 20 life? No, not 19. 18 life. I think it's at 19. Or 18, yeah, you're right. There's we a moat. moat, but All we're going right. to roll a d6. We gotta... Let's see how much he rolls. Here's our d6. 
<laughs> wow. Oh, we're taking three, three damage. Okay. All right. Well, that's a pretty good trade for a moat. I'll take three damage for a moat in this matchup. It's good. every day of the week. Yeah, it will absorb two thirds of that next turn. Right. Yeah, every day of the week I'll take that. So, and Kevin's got nothing to do with a moat. Uh, Kevin probably has some flyers, right? You think? I don't think so. And he doesn't have anything different to remove a moat. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's fair. But I don't think he has any flyers. I mean, the maddening hex, if it hangs out there, that's plenty. Oh, and there's there's, there's another... Stolen uh, Viper. Yep. It's a baby Eidolon. One-sided. Yep. I mean, that's a good way of... Uh, that's a good way of, of dealing yeah. damage across a moat. Well, what's interesting, though, is if he can't get through and doesn't have enough burn... Yep. Um... Kevin's got does Kevin who it comes a card draw match in a way and, you know so I don't who's gonna deck themselves in? I don't think we're gonna get anywhere close to that there's just so many burn spells in right. Kevin's deck and a lot I of don't them know what there is I mean I don't know his, his setup he didn't draft as many burn spells he has a lot of Punisher cards sure he's gotten way more like he has Bolt and then he has Skullcrack but he didn't take we were commenting on his draft that like he had a lot of stuff that wanted to be doing damage to creatures but then didn't have the stuff to do the damage to creatures um, he had like you know, so he has like a lot of pressure cards, and some of them, like spiteful visions can do a lot. Um, Delayed blast fireball, right? But that does like two damage, right? Or... Sure. I mean, he could just do the like, the Osier Axonil along with Impact Tremors, and that does four damage every time my creature comes to play. Right. Yeah, there's definitely ways. There's a lot of ways so, to go over the right. top. I guess given that there's an authority of the councils, it'd be three damage every time, but there's still, it's a lot of damage. And also, like, Swifty doesn't... I mean, Swifty has to win through the mode as well. Right, right So it right, slows right. everybody down. Well, I was just saying, if we were decking. Like, if we were trying to... Oh, no, yeah. we were talking about the going to the deck game. I cannot imagine that actually happening. Right. What one is that one over there? Uh, There's an Eidolon? Cyclone Raptor. Okay, got it. So we have an army, a uh, variable army building up over here. <laughs> All of which can do nothing. So, right. Also, yeah, I mean, like you said, I don't think Kevin actually has an answer to the moat. So, but, like, so does Cyclops have a second ability? Is there... No. Yeah, so why why even play it? I mean, if he brought in Toxic Deluge, you know, you're going to lose some life. Double life because of the Hex, too. But, like, you know, you're going to lose a board. But uh, Vengeant would be really good here, right? Like, we're Vengeant. Um, this is also now with moat sure. now becomes a game where Karn becomes very relevant. Yep. Right? Um... I'm gonna. I'll take the the hex damage to completely lock out your mana. Um, Inti has a lot of words on it. Does that do anything here? No. It, it basically, when it does damage, he, he it won't come up. Uh, when it does damage, you can hit, hit on the uh, card version. Uh, hit over. Okay, this is an attack trigger. Right, it's an attack trigger. Yeah, okay. it makes bigger. And... All right, so we cast an opposition agent. Yeah, I don't know. This is, uh... Like, the Apple Agent's actually very good, given that Kevin does play Vampiric. Having the Opposition Agent is right. shuts that line off. Yeah, no, for sure. Kevin probably does have an answer that I'm just not seeing, and uh, being able to shut that down is huge. Children's a pretty good card to get in play as well. Right. Yeah, there are definitely cards to get in play. So he's got... He's, not, he's like, I don't need to play this Mox in my hand. I'm not gonna play that into a... <laughs> Three plus a hex damage. Yeah, you know. uh, white plume though. That that's good, right? And it's a creature. And it's a creature. Uh, but it's a creature that can do other. You know, it's gonna he's gonna go get a land. He's gonna thin himself a bit. He gets to draw cards. He gets to make stuff bigger. And because the initiative only triggers on combat damage, yeah. Uh, there's he's just gonna, Kevin's probably not gonna get it back. Not gonna get it back, right? He's just gonna power through that initiative. Um, and. I think, actually... Well, if he powers those enough, he gets the five damage hits. Exactly. Right? Um, so, like, for every loop he can do, he can get the five damage hits. So I was saying, I think maybe he even wants to go the other um, side because he gets to scry. But I think that's better than taking five damage? No, no. I, I, I was like, because the five damage with the moats, of, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was originally saying, like, he may want to scry, but no. He wants to... Yeah, because Scry, you know, it's a go, just doesn't do anything. Right, Pressures right. don't really do much. And, and yeah, the Scrying versus drawing a card. Drawing a card is probably better anyway. Yeah. So he's down to, like, 12. Right. He took some 
damage off that. Johnny Vengeance will be really good in this match right now, too, though, right? He's going to take the damage off of the Hex, but then he can start locking down a land. Oh, that would be huge. And I don't then, think the land matters, but being able to just bolt against right. three life is huge. Right, but you lock down the land and then to be able to bolt against three life. Lock oh, down the land to be able to bolt against three life, right? Or eventually just keep locking down the land and then blow up the land, right? Yep. Depending on, on the aggression at that point. Um, yeah, Kevin, getting being able to trap underneath a moat is pretty bad news. All right, so he's Although, I mean, he still has 50 down to 10. So he got stomped to the head, right? He just got he he didn't name it out of the ob agent. He just said, like, "I'm gonna stomp your head." Yeah, reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to see anything else that he could use to get out of this. All right, so uh, he's gonna put some counters, make a white plume or something bigger. Yeah, I feel like Kevin just needs to resolve a shield red to shut this down. Right. Yeah, make the ob agent bigger. Assuming he cited up bitter blossom. It's not. I mean, Fable of the Mirror Breaker copying Orcish Bowmasters is a pretty good clock. Yeah, it's a ping, 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 ping. Yeah. You know. He's just passing the turn. But other than that, I, th I think that he's kind of spent all of his items. This is interesting. This kind of feels like a Sulfuric Vortex matchup. Where it's just like, it does, right? Yeah. In his own way. Nobody I mean, can do anything, but Kevin it, I, has a 10 turn clock. I clearly think this is Kevin's best deck, right? That he's drafted. So yeah, I agree. Is, right? I, I think it's interesting. Yeah, not having a dragon is actually kind of really annoying in the spot. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, be able to I thought he was the whole time. I thought he was going to do the uh, heartless, summon. heartless summoning list. Yeah. You know. But yeah, like one of those dragons would be really good here. <laughs> right, just Thunder Maw or whatever. Oh, is that a Spiteful Vision? No, that's the Raptor on the bottom. Okay. Right, so like Spiteful Visions would be really good. Yes. That's what I don't I, I I don't know what his main deck looks like. Yeah. But uh, I also don't know if he brings it in, in this matchup unless he sees the moat as right. a thing that he needs to draft against. I like that you have just an undercity tab. <laughs> the undercity. Yeah, Spival Visions is a card that he was seemed pretty jazzed about, and I was very down on it. it it's yeah, it's not amazing, but like you know, again, so many things are. That's oh, the that's a clock. Vortex. That's a vortex. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'll... That doubles the clock. Well, Kevin's down to nine, though. And oh, he is he? Well, because he, his Eidolon hits him, too. The yeah. Viper doesn't hit him. I his see. His Eidolon okay. hits him. But the Vortex hits him as well. Right. This does shut off the authority of the councils, though, which is nice. Right. Well, the life gain part of it, of course. Right. So we are on... Okay, so he just dealt the five, which is why Kevin's down to nine. Okay. I believe. Yeah, I think he dealt the five last time. I think yeah. he's just he's drawing his card this time. So Kevin's four turns away from taking five more damage, which is, I mean... Yeah, he drew a card because the, the guy got, just got bigger. So Nice. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we're four turns away from Kevin taking five, mm -hmm. and Swifty's going to be taking one every turn, even if he casts no spells in right. the meantime. But Kevin's taking one every turn, too. It's Kevin both is taking one every turn, yes. Right. It's both players. Oh, but that's wild. Okay. So here's where Johnny Vengeance becomes... You know, but you're going to take, he's going to take a hit off of Johnny immediately, right? So that's the problem, right? Like, and you can only do the bolt, bolt once. If you're Swifty, do you just cast zero spells for, and just say that draw draw Shieldred or I win? I mean, he doesn't though. He does. He wins well, the race right now. Okay, because how many more turns until he gets five again? Four more turns. Okay, then yeah, he wins the race right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think so, right? You don't want to risk uh, doing a Johnny Vengeance. It's probably not worth it. Um, he is going to get a free creature next hit uh, with Hexproof. Uh, what, what can he hit? Uh, off the Undercity? Off the Undercity free creature. I don't know. No, it's a, any creature, so I just need to see his list. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. All right. Well, we don't know what's in, what's in the main deck. Right. But uh, Lauren. Oh, he hits Lauren. Lauren would be very good. Yeah. Like, Lauren's what he wants to hit. Um, yeah, they're... Not much here that's super exciting. Right, right. I think right, you still okay. play a Johnny because it just gains you three life, right? You just minus it immediately. Well, but if you, what if you take six to do that? Oh, because you take two off the Eidolon. Hex. It's Eidolon. Oh. Eidolons are relevant. It's four. Okay. Hex. Off the Madden Hex? Yeah. Is that in play right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's in the middle of the play. If you roll like, six. What over there? If you okay. roll six on the Hex. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> then, yeah, no, you're right. I think you just do nothing. Yeah. The Lorne here, though, is because he kills the Hex, right? Like... Yeah, you no, say he fuck this. But thing. He, he got a he got a revoker instead. Okay, yeah. If you hit the Lauren, like just boom, you killed Hex, and then you're just. And I assume the revoker named the named the um 
the Royal Aim Vortex because it shuts down the the uh, loss of life. Is that an activated ability? It is. Okay, then problem. You pay you pay one mana to prevent them from gaining life, so yeah. it lets them gain life off the authority of the consoles. If Kevin plays another creature, yeah, I assume the same. There's just nothing better to name, right? Right. I'm gonna go check what it named. That's what it named. And he put counters on it, presumably off of the that, that you do that off of Undercity. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, what's the provoker name? Okay, he did name the Rolling Vortex. Good to know. Man, this is kind of wild. For a game where, like, nobody can do anything, yeah, it's, it's I love still, it. like... It's magic at its finest, yeah. man. <laughs> it's kind of like watching uh, Lantern Control. This is one where I really wish Peter were here, because I feel like this is exactly the matchup he would love to watch. Just people doing nothing and sitting around. This is my kind of magic. Yeah, exactly. Magic as it was intended to be played. Kevin needed to draft Pox. Hell yeah. Six. And I think both players have played this one really well. The only thing I, I see as like a I am suspect about that is choosing to play the Scythe Claw Raptor, but I think that's just probably muscle memory. Right. Well, I mean, I guess he's figuring if there is some kind of instant removal, right? It's just going to shut down some, you know. If you want to do in removal, if you're going to do removal, you're going to do it on your turn, right? I mean. Oh, so it does. It has a static ability that forces them to only play on their turn? If you, if they play it on, if they play a spell on your turn, they take four damage. Okay. Okay, that's fine then. Right. Yeah. It, that's way more defensible. I thought it literally had nothing. Other. No, 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 no. It's a four three, but if you play, it's a punisher. Yeah. Okay. If like you counter my spell, if I cast a spell, you counter it. If that you play sense. a spell on my turn, you take four or five damage. Whenever you say punisher, I assume it means they have to make a choice. Mm. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, so wait, how do the mox damage? Is that just discard to hand size or something? Yeah. Pro uh, uh, yeah, probably. He's got a lot of cards in hand. Yeah. And because he, he just got to land off of uh, in the initiative. Right. And then draw a card. That makes sense. And you're never gonna cast the mox damage. No, no, no. He also has... Is that the best fireball? Oh, it is! Oh my goodness. Your least favorite card, and it I still mean, shines. It is what it is. So, and I he's, said I he's paying all the mana for it, too, so he dodges his own Eidolon. Right, but you can't pay all the mana for it unless, you, unless he... Foretold it? He had to foretell it, and then you can't foretell it this turn. I gotta go see what's going on here. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Oh, he's casting it on their other turn, I'm sure. I, I bet this is getting cast in Swifty's upkeep. Let's see. It could be that he's... You know, he paid six mana, so maybe it was foretold earlier and we missed it. I bet I bet we. I bet it was foretold and we missed yeah, it earlier. he foretold it a couple turns ago. Yeah. It was just off screen and we didn't see it. Okay, that's exactly what happened. He foretold it a couple turns ago. It was hanging out to the side. And then, yeah, got to the point where it mattered. And it's game. Kevin shuts it down 2-0 on his first one. Well done. And wins with the delayed blast fireball, which I shit talked. So, yep. yeah. All right. Well, that was a blast. Uh, I'm excited to see how Kevin does through the rest of the day, and we'll go get the next match going in a minute.